Good morning, everyone. It's David of Sparkle Stories, and it is, for me, Tuesday morning. And we tell stories twice a week now, live, uh, Thursday night's bedtime story, and that's at 8 o'clock Eastern. And at 10 o'clock Eastern, or 9 o'clock for me, because I'm in Austin, we'll do these stories. And we're calling them inspirational stories, but essentially what it is is that it doesn't necessarily end with us going to bed. And we might learn some things, and we might be inspired by some things that are in the story. Now, these are stories that are made up on the spot, and they are told only now, only here and only now. And people can listen to them in the future, but uh, I don't know what story is going to be told. I don't know what's in the story. That is something that we do together in the moment. So I have a couple questions. And one of them, and I will look over here in the, <clears throat> in the chat to see your answers. My first question uh, to the children that are listening in particular, but it can be the grown-ups too, is, is there something today that you could be nervous about, you could be resistant about, but there's something that needs to happen today that you, you really just don't want to do. And how this will work is I will read the ideas that come through and my heart will choose one for reasons that I don't understand. And I'll tell you which one it is. So cleaning, that's one thing that has to happen today. Thunderstorms, doing schoolwork, don't want to go outside, schoolwork, 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 rainy day, don't want to sit, math, schoolwork, homework, don't like changes, schoolwork, able to see friends, getting thirsty when I go outside, brushing teeth, eating the same thing again, violin lessons, thunderstorms, Oh my word, don't want my mom to go to the grocery shopping, virus, nervous about trying or, uh, new tricks on my bike. I love my bike, but I like to do scary things on it sometimes. Missing my friends, don't want to practice violin, the virus. Right, thank you, I want to do that. I don't want to get dressed. I don't want to get dressed. Stuck at home. Yes, these are all excellent. Grumpies, fires, riding backwards on my bike, it's hard. Not enough paper towels, right. Worry a little bit about that. Worried about writing my story. I have that one. Can't go to dance class, scared of getting the virus. Not enough toilet paper. Yep, yep. Okay, well, this one is kind of a combination of schoolwork, dance class, violin class. Similar things, that's, that's what's really tugging at me right now, is that there are things that I need to learn and I don't want to for a variety of reasons. And I don't know what the reason is and I don't know how it will show up in this story. So I have a second question for you. I think I'm gonna go with um, old world jobs. And what I mean by that is think about fairy tales and they're written a long, long time ago and told a long, long time ago. And in those days, people had these jobs, which some of them still exist, like a baker, uh, some of them not so much, like a candlestick maker. There are people that do that, but not as many. So you can talk about that with your family, about like a hatter, yes, a cobbler, excellent. These are great jobs. Cobbler makes shoes, a hatter makes hats, shoemaker, tailor, blacksmith, great. You get the idea. Jester, ooh, that's got me. Farmer, Cooper, makes barrels, knight, school teacher, potter, horse handler, nice. Cooper, silversmith, blacksmith, goldsmith, king, locksmith, hat maker, a glover. Baker, hunter, weaver, queen, detective, magician, tanner, brewer of beer, farmer, Mm. Peasant, barber, pirate. Oh, these are fantastic. Knights. You know what? It's just the moment that I saw it, I knew it was the right one. All of these are excellent. I'm going to go with Jester. 
So thank you all, Dragon Tamer, oh my word, Healer, Sailor, Pirates, these are all fantastic. Maybe in the next one I will use some of those. President, <laughs> yep, yep. Uh, nurse, Gnome and Knight, these are great. All right, so we're going to go with violin, dance, school, work, and gesture, okay? So now everyone can pull away from the chat and giving their ideas which were all fabulous. Get yourself all snuggled up. Maybe you're in a different space. Maybe you're having your breakfast and you're listening. Maybe you're getting ready to go to school and you're listening. Uh, maybe you just woke up and you're still in your PJs and you're all snuggled together on the couch. But let's all gather together, get all nice and cozy, and let's get ready for the story. Once upon a time, there was a young man whose name was Cray, who wanted to be a fisherman. The only problem is, is that he came from a long line of jesters. And back in those days, whatever a young man, um, his father and grandfather was, it was very likely that he would become that as well. And it was very similar for young women and their mothers. Sometimes there was switch over from young women doing what their fathers did and young men doing what their mothers did. In this case, it was a young man who wanted to be a fisherman, but his father was a jester. Now, being a jester was a very high ranking, special and coveted position. There weren't many. In each township and kingdom and city, generally there was only one because the jester's role was to entertain one individual in particular, and that was the ruler and the ruler's family. It might be a king, it might be a queen, but whoever is in charge, it might be a duke, it might be a duchess, it might be an earl, it might be a lady, you never know. They want to be entertained just like others want to be entertained, and the person who was in charge of that was the jester. And in this particular township, it was a big town, not quite a city. It was a duke. And the duke liked to be entertained by his gesture. Now the duke was also a young man, roughly the same age as Cray, the jester's son. Now the duke loved the jester thought that the jester was so funny and so entertaining and had a lovely voice. And this was, of course, Cray's father. Um, Cray's father was an excellent singer and an excellent musician and an excellent dancer. Really, all the things that a jester must be, Cray's father was that. In fact, some spoke that he was so good that he could be the jester to the king. But... He was loyal and stayed with the Duke, who was not yet married, uh, who ruled over this large town, this large track of land with all the houses and all the businesses that were there. Now, Cray and the Duke, as I said before, were of similar age. And Cray, as I said before, was not so interested in being a jester. Instead, he wanted to be a fisherman. There were two big problems with this. One was that, of course, as I said, back in those days, you became what your father or your mother was, and it was assumed that Cray would be a jester. The other thing is that there was no place to fish. There were no lakes nearby. There was a, a small creek, and there were several wells, but it was not by the sea. And really the whole reason why Cray wanted to be a fisherman was because of all the wonderful stories that his father told about fishermen and hunters and uh, archers and all the other um, noble people that did their jobs. And it wasn't even all the stories, it was one story in particular. It's a story about a fisherman that caught a magical fish and the fish gave the fisherman a wish so long as he let the fish go. The fish gave a wish so long as he let the fish go. And um, 
in this story, the fisherman uh, wanted to become a king himself, and the fish granted this, and many other things happened in the story, but for Cray, this was the big message, which was, was that fishermen had access to this special kind of magic, and if they did the right thing and let the creature go, they were able to get whatever they wanted, and Cray had a wish. What Cray wanted was to become a duke. Um, by way of being a fisherman, now he knew that he couldn't just become a duke, so the only way that he knew to become a fisherman was by getting a wish, in the or the only way that he could become a duke was by getting a wish to become it. No one was going to make him a duke, that was impossible. And he certainly couldn't be born into it because his father was a jester. But if he could, become a fisherman and catch that magical fish, he could ask to become a duke and it could be granted. Because he spent all his time in the duke's chambers, watching his father entertain the duke and seeing that the duke got to sit in the throne and got to enjoy the, the jester and was fed anything that he wanted. And so far as he could tell, it was the best life ever was just getting everything given to you. What he didn't know was that the Duke hated being the Duke, didn't like his job at all. He would show up every morning looking forward to one thing, which was when the jester would show up because that gave him the opportunity to forget about all the other things that he needed to do that day. People didn't realize that being a Duke, even for a young Duke like him, there were decisions that needed to be made all day long. There were matters of getting along with other duchies around, other townships and cities. There was um, making sure that all the people that worked for the Duke were getting along and doing their jobs. And then there were all the petitions that would come to him all day long. The petitions looked like uh, people coming and asking for favors and people in coming and, and um, saying that so-and-so crossed their boundary, so-and-so took this or that, and it was very tiring and it was all day long. So the thing he looked forward to was when the jester would come and entertain him and he would forget for a while. Didn't like his job. So these two young men about the same age didn't really want to do what they were destined to do, be the Duke, to be the next jester, jester. Now, something that didn't occur to them, but definitely occurred to the jester's um, daughter, the young Cray's sister, was that the Duke and Cray actually looked a lot alike. See, the Duke had a, a little beard and had longish hair. Now, the um, Cray, the jester's son, was clean-faced and had much longer hair that he kept in a braid. And so she would often comment about how funny it would be if they were to switch places. And of course, Cray thought that that was ridiculous. The Duke would never do such a thing. But then the, one day, the um, Duke caught Cray joking with his sister, and he was doing an impression of the Duke. And his sister was trying not to laugh, and Cray was enjoying himself and they thought that they were over to the corner while their father was entertaining the duke and the duke of course wouldn't notice this but the duke did notice and so when the gesture was dismissed he asked for cray to meet with him in private the gesture was very worried about this because even though the duke may not have noticed he certainly noticed, and he was going to give his son and his daughter a good talking to about not messing around when they're doing work. So he looked at his son nervously and with a warning tone, you shouldn't have done that, they went out of the room. 
the guards went out of the room. The only people in the room were the Duke and Cray, the jester's son. And the Duke sat back and he asked him to come forward. And Cray came forward, but nervously and looked at him. And the Duke looked at him. And after a while, the Duke smiled. And he said, it's true. We look very similar. And Cray looked at the Duke. And for the first time, he agreed with his sister, it was true. And he then told a little joke that his father sometimes told. And the Duke began to laugh and laugh. And he said, oh, to be a jester, what fun that would be. All you do is entertain people all day long. How fabulous that would be. And the Duke, or the Je Cray, the jester son, looked at the Duke and said, well, but your life is quite wonderful, isn't it? I mean, you get served all day long and you get entertained. And he said, well, it's true, but it comes at a high price. And they discussed what the work actually looked like. And um, Cray complained about all of the training and the song lessons and the musician's lessons. And he had to play the violin and he had to take dance and he had to learn all of these verses and stories. It was a lot to learn. And the Duke talked about having to meet with all these different people and make decisions. And by the end of it, the jester's son and the Duke wanted nothing more than to switch. And they looked at each other and decided it wouldn't take that much for them to actually apply a little dark on the jester's son's face, perhaps cut his hair so that it was the length of the Duke's. And the Duke, meanwhile, could put on the jester's son's hood so that his hair was not shown and shave his face. And they were positive that no one would notice. And so, the jester's son hid while the duke called out for some specific supplies. He wanted to burn cork. He wanted um, a razor. He wanted a pair of scissors. He wanted all of these things. No one was to be in the room again. And they switched place, places. The duke wore the jester's clothes. The jester's son wore the duke's clothes. Shaved face, applied the, the, the chalk, so that, or the, the cork um, charcoal so that by the time they were finished, they looked at each other and had completely transformed. It worked. They looked like the other. And so the Duke gave the jester's son an idea of what the day would, would unfold, what was required and what he needed to do, which was to listen to both sides and use his best judgment to make a decision. And Cray said to the Duke what he needed to do, which was to listen as closely as possible and then just pretend to be the gesture. Just do what he does. Just mimic him and whatever he does with his movements, you try it. And so feeling at once nervous and excited, they went into their days. Their days were difficult. The Duke, dressed as Cray, the jester's son, found it extremely challenging to learn the violin, to learn how to dance, to learn songs and stories. But he tried because inwardly he was having fun, even though it was hard work. Meanwhile, Cray, the jester's son, was sitting on his throne, being served delicious foods, and all he needed to do was to make decisions. And at first, it was easy. He just thought of the first thing that came off the top of his head. But through the course of the day, the more that he listened, the more he realized these decisions were quite serious. And these began to weigh on his shoulders. And he thought about the effects of his decisions on who it would, um, 
whose lives it would change. In some cases, the decisions were dire and quite serious. And so by the end of his day, he was exhausted from all of the decisions, but inwardly felt like he was doing what he was meant to do. And so the two young men went to sleep that night, resolved to continue in the same vein should the other wish the same, but they wished to learn from each other as well. And so it became their practice where the Duke, dressed as Cray, the jester's son, would consult with Cray on how to do his part. Meanwhile, Cray, dressed as the Duke, would consult with the Duke on how to do his part. And they did another day, and yet another day, and another day until days and weeks and months passed. Until one day, when the jester came, and with the Duke behind him, dressed as his son, he delivered a story. And in this story, he told of two young women, one the queen's daughter, and the other was the nurse's daughter. As the story was about how the queen's daughter wished to be a healer, and the story was about the, the, the nurse's daughter wished to be a queen, and how they made an arrangement to switch, and how both the queen and the nurse knew that this had happened, and played along, because all they wanted as a parent was for their children to be happy and to do the hard work that they needed to do to be who they were. And in that moment, the Duke, who had been a gesture's son for so long, realized that he just wanted to stay a gesture's apprentice. And Cray, the gesture's son, who now had done that job for so long that he wanted to stay as the Duke. They all took a moment and looked at the jester and nodded their heads and the jester nodded back. There were guards in the room so they could not speak openly, but with that nod, they all agreed that they would make permanent the switch. And the Duke no longer thought of himself as a Duke, but instead a jester's apprentice. And Cray, the jester's son, no longer thought of himself as a jester's son, but as the Duke. And in time, after a year passed, the jester wished to retire. And the former Duke, now jester, and the former jester's son, now Duke, met each other every day, working very hard at their jobs happy to have learned what they needed to learn to do their work, and most happy to be able to do and behave and spend their days as they were truly meant to be. Well, thank you all for that wonderful story. What a great idea. I didn't realize it was going to go in that direction and it was such fun. It makes me want to go into my day and do the work that I need to do so that I can be who I want to be. And sometimes that requires that I do things that are difficult. Sometimes it requires that I do things that I might not initially want to do. But now that I see where it's going and I can be who I truly am meant to be, it's worth it. So let's go into our day with new energy and new gusto and take up the work that is on our plate because we never know what incredible adventures lay ahead where we will need those skills. All right, have a wonderful Tuesday and I'll see some of you Thursday night for bedtime. Bye-bye. <laughs>